My name is Ben Deeb. I'm a science teacher in Southern California with a background in environmental science and geology. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to calculate relative plate velocities. So with plate tectonics, we know that we have these plates that make up the Earth's crusts that are constantly moving away from each other and into each other and sliding against each other. And what geologists want to know is exactly how fast those plates are moving. Now the current way to measure this is by using satellite laser technology. So they'll have satellites up in space that shoot lasers down and they're able to very precisely calculate exactly how much these plates are moving each year. But until recently we didn't have that kind of technology, so geologists had to find other ways to measure this. One of the most important ways we measured relative plate velocity was by looking at what's called seafloor spreading. So one of the ways they looked at seafloor spreading to try to understand how fast the plates were moving is that when new crust is created at that divergent boundary, there would be actually different polarities, uh, magnetic polarities, in the iron there. Um, so that new rock is created, mostly basalt, and it'll have a lot of iron in it. That iron, as it comes out, is polarized by the Earth's magnetic field. Every once in a while, the Earth will actually switch its magnetic field. Its north and south poles will switch. And by looking at the polarity of the iron that comes out in that seafloor spreading, scientists can get an idea of just how old that, that material at the bottom of the ocean is. Another way they can do that is actually to look at the sediment buildup on top of that rift there um, and find out how much sediment has fallen on the new plate material. Now, the other way that scientists will generally look for relative plate velocity is by checking out what are called hot spots or uh, magma plumes. And those will be areas where you'll just have an area that, uh, of magma that shoots up from the mantle up through the Earth's crust. And that usually creates volcanoes. Sometimes they're undersea volcanoes. Sometimes those undersea volcanoes will grow so large that they actually pop out of the ocean and create islands. And that's actually how Hawaii was created. Um, but those hot spots always stay in the same place and the Earth's crust passes over them. So as the Earth's crust passes over them, the magma will pop up through a new location and we can actually measure um, in very long term scale how fast those plates are moving over those hot spots. Uh, and actually looking at Hawaii is a great way to do that because if you look at the islands of Hawaii, they're kind of going in a line. That's because the Earth's crust is moving over that hot spot and each time the Earth's crust moves, a new hot spot will create a new Hawaiian island. And there's actually a Hawaiian island underwater right now that in a few hundred thousand years will actually poke out of the water because that hot spot has stayed the same and the Earth's crust has moved over it. Right now, the most effective and efficient method of measuring the relative plate velocities in the Earth's crust is by using satellite imagery from space and uh, lasers that they'll shoot down. But there have been other ways by measuring seafloor spreading and the crust's movement along hot spots as well to measure how fast plates are moving relative to one another. I'm Ben, and those are a few ways that geologists calculate relative plate velocities.